This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful turntable. These are not my beautiful records. Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. For you eagle-eyed viewers out there, you've probably noticed I do have records here, but these are not my records. I'm not at home. I'm at my uh, sister's place, actually visiting, and these are my brother-in-law's records. A wonderful guy who, in all seriousness, has helped me out in a lot of situations where I needed some help. Wonderful person, but I'm not here to extol his greatness as a human being. We are here to judge him by his records. You guys do that? I know I do. Like, you know, you go, you go to a friend's house or a family member or even just an acquaintance or just invited somewhere and someone has a large physical musical collection. And I, I just beeline to it. And you know, look through their collection, and yes, I judge them because that's who they are, right? I mean, some people judge based on the car you drive or the clothes you wear or the job you have. No, 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 no. I judge you based on what music you have. So, and my brother-in-law has a lot of explaining to do. I have been fascinated by his record collection for years, years. Every time I come over here, I'm like just baffled because it, it's, he has different impulses than I do. It's, you know, I, I'm ADHD. I've talked about this before, like seriously. And, you know, part of ADHD isn't, you know, it, it isn't just being scatterbrained. It's also like laser focused on, on certain things and like obsessive about certain things. And for me, it's the music, right? You know, I, I, if there's a band I like, I have to complete the whole discography, find every album of theirs. I'm, not, I, I'm just, yeah, I, I can't stop until I do. He's not like that. His stuff is like totally random. So here's an example. The Kinks, we all love the Kinks. He has some, he has three Kinks records, three. So you might be thinking, okay, if someone has three Kinks records, they're at least going to be kind of the, you know, the really important, obvious ones. Maybe Village Green Preservation Society, Lola versus Power Man, and the Money Go Round Part One, or maybe a comprehensive compilation. Let's see which three Kinks records he has. Pull them out right here. So, Village Green, Lola, how about Schoolboys in Disgrace? Yeah, if you're gonna have three Kinks records, is this gonna be one of them? We're gonna have a Kinks week at some point, but. Okay, this one, I actually really like this one. One, you know, one for the road, double live album in the midst of that great Arista period that I, that I really love. Okay, okay. Oh, here's a comp. The Kinks, Volume 2. Where's Volume 1? That would drive me nuts. That would drive me nuts. I, just the way he goes. Anyway, <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. So here's an idea I had. I mean, I'm here. I figure, you know, we do the rando pulls occasionally where I blindly pull five records off of my shelf. And those are the records we have to talk about in the video. I thought it might be fun. Let's do a rando pull from his shelves. And we'll talk about what we got to talk about. So I'll just kind of go each shelf. It's another thing he packs his records so tight. Okay, there's one. Let's, uh, let's move down here. Let's pick, ah, pick something here. Okay. Let's see. I'll go in this corner over here. Damn. 
Okay, there's one. Oh, I'm not supposed to. Well, I can't read what's on here anyway. Let's just go here. How about? Let's see. Um, pull it out from here. Whatever that is. Uh, let's go down here. Okay. Got them. All right. Well, let's take a look. Okay. Steven Stills Live. I own this as well. So I can talk about it. Big Stills fan. This was, what was this? Mid 70s, right? 75? Exactly mid 70s. Um, side one is electric. Side two is acoustic, solo acoustic. And for big Stills fans like me, it, it, you know, he's a great, he's, I mean, he's a great electric player, but the acoustic stuff, man, that's, that's where it's at with Steven Stills. I, I, he is my favorite acoustic guitar player in the, you know, the, the rock realm. I mean, nobody's better in my opinion. Now this record is kind of interesting. I don't know if it quite captures the total greatness. The electric side's a little sloppy. To be honest with you, but fun. You know, yeah, let's see. Where they go. They go through like wooden. It's so hard. To, yeah, wooden ships. Four days gone. He does a cover of Rocky Mountain Way. Right? You know the Joe Walsh song. This is some stuff on there, but the acoustic side actually wonderful version of Change Partners on there. Now, if you want to kind of his his incredible you know speed and flash, he does a version of uh, you know the the Robert Johnson. Crossroads, which is amazing. Anyway, not doesn't quite capture as great as I have seen him live, but uh, really, really good, I think. Okay, that one's all right. What do we got next here? Stanley Jordan. I also own this. This is nice. Magic Touch. Let me take a look there. You guys know who Stanley Jordan, I guess he's still around, is? I, I got to see him live once. So he's a jazz guitar player, and, and he's, like, amazing. Because he has a pretty, or had at least at the time, a pretty unique technique. And I, now I know, you know, the, the, the finger tapping and all that, of you know, Eddie Van Halen and all that. Stanley Jordan sort of took it to a whole new level. I mean, he would even, it was all tapping. I mean, even, like, like chords and stuff. And so what he would have... I saw him do this live. It's incredible. On one guitar sometimes, so he'd you know, do chords and he'd like, solo up here. Or he would have a guitar like on a stand and be chording on that. And then another guitar you know, hung you know, around his neck and be soloing on that and, and, and like doing jazz stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, Just amazing. This is one of his early records. And I think one of his best. Um, you got like a seven-minute version of Eleanor Rigby on there, which is just astounding. Has some Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk stuff on there. You know, covers covers uh, "Angel" by Jimi Hendrix. "Return Expedition" is a is a original song of his, which is really good actually. Now this is this is where or he's worth kind of investigating, and this, this is probably probably a pretty good place to start, I think. All right, what else we got here? Dr. John, Locked Down. Hey, I have this too. I have this. This came out not too long ago, 2012. You know, so I guess one of his last albums. I don't, know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how many records he made after this before he died. But this is really good. Actually, I was listening to this not too long ago. Real groovy, real swampy. Um, the Black Keys. They they back him up, and so they they, they lay down a real good kind of kind of rough grooves for him, and and he's he's still awesome. Kind of recaptures a little bit of that sort of night tripper vibe, you know, which you hadn't had from him in a while. All right, what do we got here? Kenny G.
last record. Nina, 99 Luft Balloons. I've talked about this song actually in another video. Love that song. That is the only song I've ever heard from Nina. This is the whole album. Uh, if you, you see it, the, the first song on here is that song. I get, looks, I get maybe the, is this the, oh, that's interesting. Is this? Huh. Well, so it looks like, I, I'm, I, I'm not, okay, I'm not familiar with this album at all. <laughs> so I just, you know, I just know that song. I always thought she was, she was really cute too, though. Anyway, 99 Red Balloons. So I think that's the English version. It looks like at the end, so it opens on side one with 99 Red Balloons, closes on side two with 99 Luft Balloons, which I guess is the, the German version, right? And it looks like all the songs on side one are in English and all the songs on side two are in German. It's kind of cool. I can't. I'm, what I'm trying to do is tell if all the songs are repeated, like, you know, these are English versions, or if it's it's just the one song that has two versions, and then these are all actually distinct different songs. I can't read German, so I can't tell. All the, they don't look like they're the same. I don't know. Does anyone know about this record out there? <laughs> so I'd actually be very curious, if because, I, I mean, I love that song. And if the rest of her stuff is, you know, at that level or close, I'd be interested in getting this record. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea. How about in the comments? How about in the comments, if you're familiar with Nina's 99 Luft Balloons, the album, the whole album, is it as good as that song, or is it a case of just that song being awesome and the rest? You know? All right, guys. Having some fun with my, my brother-in-law's record collection. Um, but now, you know, I'd... Thank him for letting me play around with his collection and uh, make this video. And despite some of the stuff he has on here, it actually, it's not a bad collection. All in all, there, there's some really good stuff in there that I don't have that I, I've always kind of wanted to get. But the randomness of it still really gets me. Anyway, let's talk about that in the comments too. Do you guys go to other people's place and like you know, look at their record collection and make judgments? <laughs> and all of that. I don't know. All right, guys. We'll appreciate you guys watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps us out. Like the videos, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. And very soon we will return to my own record collection. All right. We'll see you guys later.